with all your heart. Trust Him. Even if it doesn't work out the way you want it to work. I've been in the ministry a long time. I've been on this program for 40 years since the day it began. I've had this privilege. 51 years of evangelism, would you agree that I've seen a lot? Crusades around the world on most continents. I've seen a lot of miracles. I've seen some tremendous things that you knew only God could do this. I saw a leper when it was called Sri Lanka that was totally covered in leprosy and was healed by the power of God. Four or five days later in that same crusade came back and I could testify his skin was as smooth as it could be. I've seen that. But I want to talk about when God doesn't come through like you want him to come through. Because everyone in this place tonight can identify with what I'm about to say. Because in a few moments, Chip Radke is going to be with you. And he's going to give you his testimony of what it's like to go through a battle that in the natural it wasn't won. Things happen, but God is sovereign, don't they? So let me just go to this very quickly. The program's kind of gone this way because this is the way the Holy Spirit has led it. So let me obey the Holy Spirit. It was December the 6th, I shared this several years ago, December the 6th, uh, 1970. It was uh, late in the afternoon, early evening. The telephone rang. It was my baby brother. His name is Rex, 29 years of age. So December 6th, 1970. It's Saturday night. Rex and I talked. I hadn't seen him. He was away on business. And so I said, I'll see you tomorrow at church where our father uh, pastor. And so that uh, very night before that night was over, my life would be changed in a, dramatic, a very dramatic way. My father on the other end of the line uh, about 11 o'clock said, uh, get ready, son, we need to go to Tyler, Texas. Your brother's been in an automobile accident. When we got to the hospital there in Tyler, there was my brother in the emergency room hooked up to all kind of things. And I was thinking about Brad tonight. My brother was a weightlifter and a strong Christian for the Lord Jesus Christ. So he lay on this emergency table all hooked up. And, uh, and the machine was breathing for him. And then I could see him with his shirt off and they had him covered. But, you know, those big muscles, it just looks like he's just asleep. And so I prayed. My mother, my father, all of us were there. And so this went on for several hours. My mother would go in and, and she would pray and then she would sit by the door. Well, I remember going in and I would say things like this. Now listen to me real closely. I would say, Lord, uh, my father's preached his whole life that you're the healer. So this is a good time to show up and, and be the healer all his life. Then I'd say things like, Lord, uh, my mother... Uh, she gave birth to this boy. And I remember as a child when he was dying, the doctor said he wouldn't live, but you healed him. And now we need you to do it again. Why don't you do it for mother? Do it for mother. Well, then uh, he comes out, the doctor do, uh, does and says some things aren't looking good and some organs are shutting down. Well, then I go back in. And then I say, now look, oh Lord, I said, uh, I've just, you know, just started kind of, preaching a little bit and all of that kind of thing. Why don't you do it? And then while, I, while I'll, I'll go around the country and someday I can tell the whole world that you uh, came into that hospital in Tyler, Texas and, and raised my uh, brother up. And then finally I just kind of got adamant about the whole thing and I said, look, and this is the way I kind of said it because I'm getting frustrated. I said, now look, why don't you do it just because you can do it? You're God and you can do it. If you don't want to do it for dad, if you don't want to do it for mother, if you don't do it, want to do it for his wife, if you don't want to do it for his little two-year-old uh, baby boy, why don't you just do it because you can do it? That makes sense to everybody. 
only to have uh, the doctor walk out and says, uh, he's gone. He's gone. So there was a fire escape, you know, one of those fire escapes, and I go and I sit down by myself, and I'm really, really, really ticked off. I'm really angry, and I, I admit that I'm angry. I said, look, I love you, Lord, I, you know, all this kind of thing, but that thing about that divine healing deal, I'm not quite sure I'm hanging in with you on that thing. You know, I'm just kind of saying it right now the way I, I kind of felt it at the time. So we follow the, the, the hearse back to Fort Worth, and now it's Sunday uh, evening, uh, early, uh, late afternoon, uh, uh, early evening. Church is getting ready to start. So here we followed my baby brother home hours before. He's in the funeral home. And so my father uh, sent word through the, our house that was across the street from the church. Everybody get ready. We're going to church. And so I, I'm in that room where I was raised with that boy. And, uh, you know, memories, 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 memories. So uh, uh, my brother came in and said, Dad said, we need to get ready and, and go to church. I said, you go tell him. I'm not going to church. I am in no mood to go praise God. So my father walks in. Now my father's one of these men, when you got in trouble with him, he called you by both names. And so he said, Dwight Edwin. He said, now you straighten up that tie. And you... You think after all these years it affect me like this, but you go in there and you dry your eyes. Straighten your tie. We're going across the street, and we're going to lift our hands, and we're going to praise the Lord. Well, I did. I obeyed my dad, and we walked across the street, and the place was packed. Our little church was just packed, and people on the outside, word had spread everywhere. So we walked down the aisle, and a man by the name of John McDuff is, is leading uh, the uh, congregation. When we walked in, he begins to sing. And God is still on the throne. He will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, he never will leave us alone. God's still on the throne. Well, here we are all, the congregation, the church is packed. We're walking in. My brother has just been killed by a drunk driver that uh, hit him. And so on. Uh, and so here, here we are. And so uh, my mother is beside me, but my dad... Here's what he does, like he's done all of those 45 years he pastored that church. He went straight up on the platform, and he always started the service with this song. What a fellowship. What a joy to find leaning on the everlasting arm. Well, his brother, I mean, his son just died, and now that he walks up and starts the service over again, because that's what he does. And I'm looking at him, and I'm going, you know... Rex just died, and you're up there doing that deal, and you know, it was touching me, and I'm angry. And then my little mother turned to me and looked at me, and her little hands are raised, praising God, patting my face like this, and said these words, Son, don't blame God. We trust in God no matter what. Now, I don't care who you are, but most of us have experienced things when God didn't answer the prayer the way we wanted Him to answer it. But let me tell you what changed my life. I walked out of that room, and when the Lord got through with me, He took me to the book of Job. And he said these words. I paraphrase. Where were you when? Yeah. 